Shalom brothers and sisters, today's topic is steps to marriage. We get a lot of letters, a lot of inquiries online, offline, through email about the steps to marry. A lot of you brothers and a lot of you sisters, you're interested in marriage. Let's go to 1 John 5 verse 14. Let's start there. The book of uh, 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to God's will, he heareth us. So let's start there. You want to get married? Is it according to God's will that we marry? This is in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. Okay. I will therefore that the younger women marry. That's the point. Young women marry. Remember in the beginning of Genesis about Adam? He said it's not good for man to be alone. And he created what? Eve, a woman for him. So, is it according to God's will? Go back to 1 John 5, 14. Let that go. 1 John 5, 14 again. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything. If we ask, meaning pray for anything. According to his will. According to his will, according to the scriptures. He heareth us. He heareth us. From there. So now we understand marriage is according to his will. From there. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 6. I want two verses. I want verse 7 and verse 17. Okay? Because now that you understand that marriage is according to God's will, that's his divine plan, okay, you can ask, you can pray for that. Now watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 7. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend... Prove him first. The next thing you got to do, you got to prove that friend. A lot of you don't realize before you become husband and wife, you got to become friends first. You got to know that spirit you want to join with. It says, if thou wouldest get a friend, what? Prove him first. Prove him. Prove him. A lot of you women, what do you see first? Big feet, big nose, big ears. Oh, he got it going on. It says you got to prove him. Was that it? Verse 7. And be not hasty to credit him. And be not hasty to credit him. Jump down to verse 17 now. Whoso fear of the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So brothers, sisters, whoso fear of the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So I'm talking about marriage right now. Because your wife, yeah, she's going to be your wife. She's your friend too. But you got to direct that friendship aright. Is this the woman that God sent for me? You sisters, is this the man that God has sent my way? Read it again. Whoso fears the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Come on. For as he is, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. So shall his neighbor be also. So everybody in your circle is going to have that same mentality that you're Israelites and you must keep the commandments. You brothers want a wife? She got to have that mindset. She knows she Israel. She knows she got to keep the commandments. You sisters, you got everybody in your circle know that they Israel. The man you're interested in. Knows that he's Israel and got to keep the commandments. Was that all of verse 17? Yes, sir. Okay, from there, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22, verse 17. So now, you know you can pray for that. You got to direct your friendships right. You got to prove that friend first before you make him or her your spouse. Okay? Exodus twenty two sixteen. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So, brother, he entices a woman. Okay, he then he lays with the woman. It says he shall surely endow her to be, to be his wife. Meaning it ain't just over with the sex. That ain't it. It's more to it than that, brother. Read that again so we get some English out of this. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. She ain't promised to nobody. And lie with her. He has sex with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall surely endow her to be, to be his wife. There's some steps there that you got to understand. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the dowry that when you read in the next verse, because a lot of you brothers, you think once you have sex with a woman, you good. That's it. That's my wife. Uh-uh, brother. Your mind is corrupt. I'm going to show you something real quick. Get me 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. For even when we were with you, 
This we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither shall he eat. You see that? If any would not work, neither should he eat. Now you might ask yourself, what does that got to do with marriage? It plays a large portion with marriage. From there, go to, um, let's jump down and go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 29, verse 22. Okay, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 29, verse 22. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 29, and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house. Read that again. Better is the life of a poor man. Better is the life of a, of a poor man in a mean cottage. Meaning in a messed up place, a jacked up house. Go ahead. Than delicate fare. Than lovely living. In another man's house. In another man's house. So, brothers, you got to understand. Number one, get a job, okay? Number two, get your own place to live. Even if it's messed up. Why is that important for marriage? Matthew 19. Matthew 19 and verse 5. It's the book of St. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 5. And said, for this cause... Shall a man leave father and mother? The cause is marriage. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother. Leave father and mother. And shall cleave to his wife. And cleave, shall cleave to his wife. Brother, how do you cleave to your wife? Does that mean she stay at her mommy and daddy house? And you stay at your mommy and daddy house? No. You got to leave your mother and father and cleave to your wife. But what do you need to do? What do you got to have to leave your mother and father? You need a job. You need your own place to live. Then you can bring your wife to be with you. Read that verse again. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. And that verse right there, a lot of you so-called Israelite brothers, you despise that. Because you like that liberty. You live at your mommy and daddy house, but you want to street with a Bible. And you said, well, you got a wife. No, brother, you still living in Disneyland, okay? You still in that low ghetto mentality, okay? That's not what the Lord is raising up for us, okay? He's raising us up to be kings and priests, to have the mindset, the mind of a king, the mind of a priest. It starts with your home, okay? You got to work, okay? You got to get your own place. Bring your wife to live with you. Cleave to her, okay? Not that... My, 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 my wife, she lived down the road down there at her mama and daddy house, and I live over here at my mama and daddy house, and we got babies. <laughs> That's out of order. That's that ghetto hood mentality, okay? And it ain't over there. Tobit 7 and 13. This is the book of uh, Tobit, chapter 7 and verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife, gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses. Take her after the law of Moses. Come on. And lead her away to thy father. And lead her away to your father. Come on. And he blessed them. And he blessed them. Come on. And called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. You see that? That's where the marriage certificate came from, all right? It's according to the law of Moses. Oh, you never read that, did you? You've been living your life as that ghetto hood rat. It's time. No, no, no. You got to come out. You got to raise your, your mentality up, brother, sister. This is according to the law of Moses. But I know right now a lot of you reject that. Oh, no, we ain't got to do that, baby. You know why a man don't want you with no papers with a woman so he can leave your ghetto behind right there with all them uh, snot-nosed kids? Then you sit in your own welfare. And your brothers that got the Bible, you're keeping that vicious cycle going. Okay? You got to be able to stand as a man, as a father, take care of your wife and your kids, have your own place as a family. That's what, the, that's what our forefathers did in the Holy Bible. You ain't going to find no other example in here. So with that, we're going to say shalom.